pleasure's mine. All right, so let's talk about Philip Watson. He is an extraordinary human being. First of all, he's very, very kind. And he's a horticulturist. He's an award-winning landscape designer. He does some of the coolest designs. I remember the very first time I ever met Philip. He showed me this magazine, and I looked closer, and that was his house on the cover. And it was this kind of magazine that you see in a doctor's office. <laughs> like, I don't know anybody who orders it, but it's always available in the doctor's office, right? Well, this is his hand-picked Proven Winners Limelight Prime Hydrangea Plant. This is known for those huge flowers. It's perennial. It's a flowering perennial shrub. It is the hardiest, the longest living, the longest bloom time. It is the most drought tolerant. That's why you want to go ahead and think about buying more than one. We had 3,700 in the beginning of the season. Oh, wow, we're down to a th 1,030 of these. And it's kind of cool because you see that they're different colors. They actually start lime, then they change to white as the summer progresses, and then that deep rose in the fall. Yeah, cool, right? Four easy pays at $7.79, free shipping and handling. All right, Mr. Philip Watson, thanks <laughs> for spending your night with me. Oh, gosh. Thank you, Pat. It's great great to be on with you. And you're right. This is my favorite of all the flowering shrubs. And I love hydrangeas. I grew up with them down in Mississippi. But this is one that in the hot sun does not wilt. It doesn't fall apart. And it's got the very strong woody stems as opposed to the green ones, you know, that, that the uh, typical mop head hydrangeas that are either the pink or the blue. This is the toughest. And if you've ever had a regular limelight hydrangea, you know they can get over 10 feet tall. Oh, I wow. have them, but I also have a very big property. This is limelight prime. It has been scaled down in size, but the blooms haven't. The blooms are still big, but the plant itself only gets four to six feet tall and that wide. And it blooms from top to bottom all summer long. And this right here is a dried one. Look how from pretty. Three years ago. Oh, stop that's it. That's what I do. I'm telling you, it's worth it getting it just to have some to dry. Oh. Because look, and, and people say, oh, how'd you keep the color to stay that way? Well, I didn't. After they faded, I spray painted them. You can do oh, it you're any kidding. color you want. No, oh, that's so cool. Fun. Enjoy thyself. But it's the Proven Winners selection. And this is the size I'm sending out to you. Oh, wow. That's a, a nice good size, Philip. Yes, and Pat, this is going to bloom like crazy this year. These will grow in full sun to only morning sun to some high dapple shade. It does need frost to set bud. But if you live, I mean, right on the border of Canada, this is hardy for you there. They're hardy to zone three. That's really cold. That's minus 30 degrees. <laughs> Ooh, ooh, ooh. Um, and that's why you chose this. Because, Philip, yes. you have you have worked your clients up and down the East Coast for many years, won many awards. They keep having you back. Um, very wealthy estates. And this is the kind of thing that you use. Yes, but it's the right plant for the right situation. And um, I want things that take care of themselves. If you have to baby it, it's going to have moments where it's not going to be good. You don't have to baby these, which is why I have 40 of these panicle hydrangeas, Wait, which is what this 40? is. 40? 40. I have an acre cool. and a half. These, my property is lined with white pines that were here when I got here. And then I've got some fences along some of the other areas. I plant these in front of the privacy fences because it makes it soft and beautiful. I plant them in front of the pines because it makes them less boring. And also this color I can see from a great distance. And once it gets established after the first year, it will take drought, which means if the hose doesn't reach all the way out to the back 40, which mine doesn't, they're not going to die. The regular mop, head, mop heads can fall apart. This will not. It will not disappoint you. And the reason all those blooms are standing up instead of falling over is because the of the woody stem that I described. Talk so, to us about how you. they color change. I, to me, that's one of okay. the most amazing <laughs> things. I love that. It is. Well, the, the blooms are going to be putting up probably in about a, um, in a month from now. Um, and they will start off lime green. And then they go to white. They stay white most of the summer. And then roundabouts, 
the end of July, early August, they'll start to go light pink, and then they go to this deep cranberry color. And that's the way they'll stay. In fact, I leave even after the frost has come, I leave the old blooms up because it's something to see in the wintertime. I like the look mm, of that. That would and be beautiful. And even after they, after they have frosted, you can go out there in January and cut some of those brown ones off and paint them and put them in, put them on your mantle, paint them gold, pa pa paint them silver. You can do anything with them. And I know we got a lot of crafters out there, and I have to be crafty, too. The older I get, i got to have more tricks. And <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this is one of them. And I use them in, on the mantle, which is, you know, across the weight, mix it in with my mm -hmm. greenery. Um, in the summertime, I had these in the garage. And when I dry them, I dry them upside dry down. Dry them like upside that. down? Okay. Yes. And um, then I've got these to use in my flower arrangements. Even in um, the summertime when I have fresh flowers, I run fresh flowers through this. And this forms some stability for oh. my arrangement. It's kind of like an oasis, you know, that yeah, you yeah. have to stick your flowers in. Except you've got this, which is makes the whole thing lighter weight and quite nice. I love all those ideas. <laughs> all right, so we need more than one of these. That's why we gave yeah. you the easy pay option. And even if you're new with us and you're shopping for the first time, um, go ahead and use any major credit card. If you use your Q card, five easy pays. Now we're down to the final quantities on this. And when I tell you, you're gonna go, well, how's that final quantities? But trust me, we had, what did we have, Carrie? Like 3,200? We had 3,700, we now have fewer than 900. And what happens, because we're towards the end of our garden season, is you get it home and you go, wow, because I've been starting to get some of my plants. I'm like, these are real, they ship beautifully this year. They yes. look really, really great. If you come back and they're gone, you're gonna be disappointed. Also, the other thing, Philip, is the size that you're giving us is a very well-established size in that one gallon. Yes. And it's easier for me to be able to dig the hole instead of you know spending a lot of money and getting a, a more mature plant and not being able to properly get it a hole deep enough. Well, Pat, this will also bloom this year because they, do, they reach maturity uh, fairly quickly. So you'll have a lot of blooms this year. It's a proven winners, which means that it is the top of the top. Um, I'm always looking for that, uh, that signal on there. Um, but it's the longest lived of all the hydrangeas, the hardiest of all of them, the lowest maintenance of all of them, and it has the longest bloom time of any hydrangea. If you want a low maintenance, high interest shrub that's drought tolerant, this is the winner for you. And you are Don't going to get a beautiful this. grow guide so you know exactly uh, you know what to do with it, even if you've never grown yes. something like this before, to ensure your success. That's what Philip is all about. All right, Thank Philip. Thank you so much. I'm not going to let you go anywhere because we need to talk about this 